The Super Mario franchise is known for having some pretty fun and entertaining boss fights, but can also be known for having some pretty lackluster ones as well. And today, we're gonna look at the latter. We're looking at every single Mario mainline game and spin-off game, sports game, any Mario game you can think of, and talking about the worst boss in every single game. Now, in order to be eligible for this list, the game has to have more than one single boss, and it has to include Mario in some way. Now, if it doesn't include Mario in the game, I can't count it, because technically it's a Mario spinoff with a different character, like the Donkey Kong Country, and maybe even the Yoshi series outside of Yoshi's Island. But for the most part, we have 51 Mario games here today, so clearly I won't be spending a whole lot of time on each segment. I'll be quickly briefing the boss up, talking about what I think is so bad about it, and why why it's the worst one of that game. The inspiration of this video came from Copycat on YouTube. Go check them out. They do videos like this all the time, but I just wanted to take this idea and be extremely expansive with it and cover more games that I could probably even think of. So if you're excited for this video, make sure you stop what you're doing, leave a like, and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Mario, and also to help us reach 200,000 subscribers. We are so very close. Thank you guys so much. Let's jump into the worst boss of every single Mario game. Starting all the way at the beginning with Super Mario Brothers, all of these bosses bosses are just Bowser we have to hit the axe, but the one where it's the blooper disguise in World 5 has this weird wall of bricks or ceiling of bricks and it's just an awkward room to fight in. It's not great. Next up we have Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. Bowser from World 9 is just annoying because you have this giant ceiling once again kind of blocking your way of jumping and you just have to go underneath them, which is just terrible level design and like for a boss room you're fighting in the hallway. It's not great. Mario Bros. 2 King Wart, the final boss, is just not great you had to throw vegetables into his mouth which is an incredibly small window and he just sits there burping up bubbles it's disgusting it's weird and why is there a vegetable factory machine is there like lore i don't know about this is just not a fun final boss fight it's repetitive it's not that hard and it's just boring honestly in mario brothers 3 you fight boom boom like a hundred times and it's just this turtle that runs at you moving his arms back and forth and i can tell you right now you're gonna see this guy a lot on this list this boss fight is just so easy to cheese as well you can just stand there and jump on his head as soon as he recovers it's not great so with king totemesu in mario land it's kind of just a ripoff of the bowser boss fights from super mario brothers where you just have to get to the end of the bridge in order to drop it on the boss but the way that the attack patterns work with this boss is just completely scripted so it's just like he jumps up and down shoots up and down fire like it's the exact same spot you can time it down perfectly there's seriously no challenge to this at all a lot of the bosses in mario land 2 can be summed up by just being cheesable and this one is no exception for Octopus, yeah, his name is Octopus, you literally can just float above his head and tap A a couple times and you'll just keep bouncing off of his head every time he regenerates his life and he's dead. Like, that's it. The fact that you could just sit on enemies' heads in this game was always kind of wild to me. And ending our classic games, we have Super Mario World's Resnor, which is literally just a slow-moving Ferris wheel of fire-breathing dinosaurs. You just hit the platform underneath them and they fall. Who designed, what even is this? I still to this day have no clue what they were thinking with this. It's just a terrible boss design. It just doesn't even look cool. Bet you didn't expect to see this game on the list. Mario Pinball Land had this boss called Porky Puffer, which drove me crazy as a kid because it was the spiked fish where if you hit any of the spiked fish, it just kind of shot Mario around the room. And if you didn't have a protection pipe, uh, yeah, your ball was going in the gutter for sure. But you had to open these hatches and toss the bombs at them, which just could be extremely difficult because it always hit one of the children instead, and the children could respawn, which made it even worse. Mario Dance Dance Revolution really did not have that many bad bosses. In fact, all the songs in the game was really good so if i had to choose one it would have to be wario's the song was great the atmosphere was great but the only reason i would say it's the worst in the game because it kind of repeats what you do with waluigi in the very first boss battle of the game but otherwise it's a great song it's a great environment it's just i had to choose one and this one would probably be it king bob -omb from mario 64 i swear is one of the funniest things i've ever seen because as a kid i thought for sure you were supposed to throw him off the mountain but instead you just pick him up and pretty much set him back down three times which is just just hilarious. There's no way that little drop is breaking this guy. I'm looking at Super Mario Sunshine. I'm sure you guys thought I was going to say Ely Mouth because it is terrible to kind of wash teeth underwater, but the one with King Boo is just not good. I love this game to death, but this boss battle can take literally upwards to like 15 to 20 minutes based on the slot machine's RNG, which is always guaranteed to give you like four or five rounds of enemies where you had to just wait for the next round. It's just a big wait fest. 
and it's just weird how it works. Throw a pepper and then throw a random fruit to hurt it? I, why? For Mario Galaxy, I wanted to pick Mandibug stack, but it's kind of just two regular enemies stacked on top of each other, so picking a real boss, I kind of went with Baron Burr, because this boss was so weird. It's just a floating piece of ice rock thing, and you just spin on it and then kick it. And you gotta do that like two more times. I don't understand why this is a boss battle. It never gets harder. He never gets more tough. And you fight him on like this little tiny platform at the top of the mountain. It's pretty goofy. I could once again go the Mandibug stack because they appear again in Mario Galaxy 2 for some reason. But to me, the worst boss battle was anything with Bowser. Because what they did in Mario Galaxy 1 compared to what they did in 2 is criminal. The downgrade is criminal. For one, you're on this little planet getting bombarded by meteorites and Bowser's punches. And it just never breaks or even leaves a dent in the planet for some reason, and all you do is ground pound these little meteorites into Bowser. That's it. Like, you do this four or five times in the entire game, and it's not fun. Moving towards the new Super Mario Bros. series, we have Bowser Jr. from New Super Mario Bros. DS because this boss is an absolute joke. He literally lightly jogs toward you. I don't even know if you call it a jog, like a fast walk, and you just jump on his head. Like, there's no type of combat or anything. This first fight with Bowser Jr. is probably the funniest thing I've seen in Mario Bros. And in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, all the Koopalings play very similar. They just have different stage gimmicks. So, I had to go with Larry. It's one of the very first bosses in the game, and all he does is jump at you very slow without anything going on in the background or the foreground. It's pretty boring. For New Super Mario Bros. U, the crown definitely goes back to Boom Boom because he just runs at you once again with his arms flailing back and forth. There's not much to it and you can just wait out his hitbox so that way as soon as he pops up, you just hit him once again. For New Super Mario Bros. 2, it definitely goes back to Resnor because this boss is just the epitome of awful. Like, there's nothing good about this boss. Alright, let's kick it back into 3D Mario gear. So, yep, Boom Boom is back again. I told you he's gonna be on this list a lot. He's a little bit more difficult, I guess, this time because he spins a lot faster and you have to actually like jump on his head if you want to hit him while he's spinning. But besides that, it's just the good old boom boom. You're in this little small room, you wait for him to get up, you can hit him again after the first time. I mean, you can purposely make this longer by just waiting for him to get up, and if you had to do that, the boss is just not great. Super Mario 3D World, you could have never guessed. Yeah, it's Boom Boom. Boom Boom plays pretty much exactly the same he does in Super Mario 3D Land. I mean, down to the T. I think now his shell can go invisible. It probably could even do that in 3D Land. I can't remember for sure, but yeah. I, yeah. Now for Bowser's Fury. I'll make you a deal. If you get this right, you have to subscribe. It's just, you have to. If you have an idea of who this is going to be, you have to subscribe. I don't make the rules. <laughs> It's Boom Boom. I guess technically now it's Cat Boom Boom, so it, it's kind of different, right? No, it's exactly the same. I mean, literally down to the T, exactly the same boss fight as like the last 50 games. I, I, this was like a phase of like Nintendo not knowing what to do with bosses. I just noticed like this whole era was just like, what do we do with Boom Boom? Let's have him spin around. It, this is not good. Now for Super Mario Odyssey, I wanted to just go with a Brutal and call it a day, but I really wanted to choose something that truly felt not good to me within Mario Odyssey, and it has to be Torque Drift. Torque Drift had the most potential out of every single boss in this game, and it's probably one of the most brain-dead boss battles in the entire game. If you can hold a button down, you completely succeed. The only thing you have to dodge are the lasers in the middle of the room that sprout from his big laser. Now, he adds more blocks to protect his beacons after each round, but it's not like he makes it harder to hit that beacon. All you have to do is just go underneath. It's not like there's a specific section that you have to burst through. You just hold the button down, go through underneath each single one of them as this laser is slowly shooting at you, and and do it to him in the middle of the room. It's just, just such a whack boss fight for such a great game and for a game with many good boss fights. Yes, Mario Kart DS actually had real boss fights and it also had some where you just race the bosses and on this race you race Wiggler on Mushroom Bridge and I put this on the list because it's just so incredibly easy it doesn't even really feel like a boss fight. You're just kind of doing time trials by yourself on Mushroom Bridge when you're like halfway through lap one. And you gotta do this for three laps because you get stars every time you pick up an item box or every time you run over a vehicle, you get a star or a mushroom. So it's just like you are miles ahead of Wiggler by like halfway through this thing. And it's not even close. It's just a weird boss fight. It doesn't even feel like you're fighting anybody. It just once again feels like a time trial. So Mario Power Tennis on the GameCube only had one real boss fight with Mecha Bowser, so I didn't want to include it because it's only one boss fight. So let's go straight to Mario Tennis Aces, where the very first fight is PD Prana, and it's actually not even a bad fight. It gets you used to the mechanics and stuff, and it's actually pretty cool and references Super Mario Sunshine with the belly button poke that you have to hit. Uh, but honestly, the boss fights in this game were actually pretty good and unique, so this isn't by any means bad. It's just the worst one of every other one in this game. 
It's actually very funny that a Mario Golf game got boss fights, but Mario Golf Super Rush actually had like three boss fights. But the worst one was definitely the lightning statue. Now there's not much you can do in a golf game to fight a boss, and it shows a lot in this game. You're just moving left and right, and every now and then using your special dash attack to get out of the way. Um, but you just kind of stand on these platforms and take a very slow swing in order to hit the target, and you just do this a couple times and it's dead. And you kind of, I guess, hitting back the lightning orb, it just looks goofy. This is just a weird boss fight altogether. Maybe Mario Golf games should not have boss fights. All right, we are halfway done with the list already yes only halfway there's still so many other mario games to talk about but if you're still here stop what you're doing leave a like and subscribe it goes a long way we are so close to 200,000. thank you so much for tuning in this long and i hope you guys enjoyed the rest of the video let's get back to it so i will be the first to admit that i've never got through mario rpg i played a little bit of it when i was younger but i always wanted to go back I don't know what the worst boss technically is in this game, but I did go online and look at what many people were talking about and what many people considered being the worst boss. And I kept seeing Mega Smilax over and over again, mostly because it's just a bland Mario enemy and it's one of the only few ones in this game outside of like Hammer Bros. Uh, but for the most part, it's just like a piranha plant that can regrow his heads every time you take one out. So it's nothing really special and I don't really know much about the fight itself, but I just know a lot of people find it to be very eh. On to Mario and Luigi and it's a very very special occasion because it's their 20th anniversary. But starting off with Superstar Saga, who who Rose is pretty weird. It's like some type of statue thing that tests the bros as they're making their way up the mountain, and it's just a weird test because all it does really is has the same laser attack and then it moves into a pillar. And you know which pillar to break because it's always the one that he's going to move into next. So it's just a big repetitive boss fight. Always break the pillar that he's going to move into first and then attack him, which just drags the fight out very, very much. Mario Luigi Partners in Time is one of my favorite games in the series. And I picked Elder Shrewboid because of kind of a personal vendetta against this guy. I cannot stand this boss battle. It tore me up when I was a kid. And just the attacks are so random and weird and it just doesn't make any sense. You knock his spike ball away so he just falls over. I, I don't get it. And then there's this like one you have to jump out of his crystals as he's throwing this ball at you and sometimes you can't make it out in time. But I feel like a lot of the battle is him just falling over and it just doesn't make sense to me. I, I don't really get this one. It might just be the general consensus that boss battles that take a long time in Mario and Luigi games are just not great. But for Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, the same applies. Cretin is just this boss that you have to use a color specific bro in order to break the different segments of his body. And it just sucks because if there's no more reds, Mario can't do anything besides just jump on the blue ones which does nothing to the creature. And you just gotta sit and wait for the colors to correspond to whatever bros up and it's just a big sit and wait fest. And then they break apart, you kill them, and then they form back together and you gotta do it again. It's, it's just not that fun. In Mario & Luigi Dream Team, you fight all these quote unquote beef characters that just look like Cappies from Kirby. Um, but there's one called Beef Cloud and he just sits there and sleeps on the floor and gains health as he's sleeping. So you kinda gotta hurry up and use a special on him and then he's dead after just like one attack. I know it's kinda supposed to be like a joke boss, but like, come on. Now, an easy go-to for Mario & Luigi Paper Jam was probably one of the papercraft battles because they're all very bland and not too many people like them. Uh, but I had to go with the Charging Chuck Brigade because it's just like a football team that you fight. Wh what? It's literally just a whole bunch of Charging Chucks in a herd and you fight them. I don't know what was going on here. And it wasn't even like it was that hard at all. All of their attacks were greatly telegraphed so you knew what was coming. This was just a weird boss choice in my opinion. Moving over to the Paper Mario series now, we have Paper Mario 64 and Twink vs. Kami Koopa. Now listen, I get it, the whole scene with Twink is very cute, how he's getting stronger and more powerful and eventually is able to grow his power in order to defeat Kami Koopa, which is really cool, but the boss fight itself is so... oh gosh. It is very long. Like, you're literally battling Kami Koopa by pressing just the same buttons. You have Peach Focus, you have Twink just run into Kami Koopa until eventually he's able to hurt her and knock her down. It's very boring. In Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, you'll go to Glitzville and battle in the pits. And you'll come across some people that just talk trash to you the entire time until you fight them, and they are the Armored Harriers. Now, they literally run their mouths, and the only purpose they serve is for you to learn your Yoshi Buddy's new ability, which is his gulp, which allows you to suck one up and spit it at the other, 
completely devastating them. They were talking so much stuff in the locker rooms, their literal only purpose is to be used to teach players how to use Yoshi's gulp special ability. That is all. Super Paper Mario's Bone Chill boss is just known for being such an underwhelming letdown. This world was just spectacular because it was so weird for a Mario game. It had Mario traversing the depths of what this was like Mario version of hell and making his way all the way to heaven and then just to fight this guy which was like a creature of lore to the people that lived here and all you had to do is use Luigi's super jump and blast him in the head a couple times. Like this giant blue dragon with a cannon on him amounted to this? I mean, it's so short, I seriously can't even remember this boss fight that much from when I played it as a kid. And now we jump into the rather bad side of Paper Mario, starting with Sticker Star. You cannot convince me it's any other boss in this game besides Bowser. Bowser was the biggest headache of my childhood, man. You have to go into this boss with like very, very specific stickers in order to take him down. Because the first segment of this boss battle is just him going through different parts of the hallway and you having to utilize thing stickers in order to make sure that you can get by each section. So if you didn't come into this battle prepared like to the max, you were dead. There's nothing you could do. So somehow while making this video, I completely forgot Color Splash. So there's technically 52 bosses in this video, but Color Splash had one boss that was so weird. It was the Black Shy Guy. And it was just like, it jumped on the pirate ship to fight you. And it didn't even pose a threat because you could take it down with two pretty decent cards. Like, and it was gone. I don't even know what it was supposed to do. It wasn't even like a unique looking Shy Guy. It was just like a black slash gray Shy Guy and it was stacked with other ones, and it just, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's supposed to be like a ninja or something secret, but it was just whack. When I got to Origami King, I did not hesitate to pick the Fire Filamental. This boss, at least the first time around, is the most insanely terrible setup boss battle ever, because the way you had to defeat this thing just sucks. You're supposed to just straight up attack it, which I thought you couldn't even hit the thing because of it being on fire. But you're supposed to just make your path to it and straight up attack the thing in order for it to drop feathers all over the ring. And then once those feathers are on the ring, you're supposed to use the water elemental attack, which then washes the fire off the feathers, which prevents it from regaining its health. But you don't know this, and it just absolutely sucks trying to figure out what to do, and the thing keeps regenerating health. This was an annoying boss fight to say the least. Time for the party games. Yep, once again, probably didn't expect that, did you? Mario Party DS actually has boss battles, and the Dry Bones one is just stupid. So you gotta go around this ring and hit these buttons, and you don't even have to hit them in order or anything. You just hit these buttons in order to have these like orbs fly around and attack him. Now you do have to hit them in order the way the emblems appear, but they keep blinking on the top map the way you have to hit them, so it's not like it gets harder. And then Dry Bones attacks are just extremely terribly slow, so it's not like you're being chased or haunted by anything. It's just a weird, lazy boss battle in my opinion. Look, I personally love Mario Party 9 for some reason, and Mario Party 9's boss battles is one of my favorite parts of the game, but I have like a pact with my family to never pick Bombard King bob -omb ever, because it is so frustratingly difficult. It's not like the concept itself is difficult, it's very simple. You pick a bomb that no one else picks and you get to throw it at King bob -omb for points. But the thing is, someone's always gonna pick something that someone else picks because there's only four options. It's not like we have six or seven options here. And of course, everybody in the room wants to go for the big ones, but then I'm thinking, okay, everybody's gonna go for the small one then. Then everyone ends up going for the same exact small one and we keep bumping into each other, which means no one gets to throw a bomb if everybody bumps into each other, which means this game can go on for like 30 to 40 minutes. It is ridiculous. It is just too much. This one was very difficult because Mario Party 10's bosses were all pretty much a letdown compared to what they did in 9, but it has to go to Mega Goomba's Ladder Leap because you just climb up some ladders and jump off the Goomba's head. That's it. And then I guess occasionally avoid the waddle wing that flies back and forth. But this is all you do. Like there's nothing unique about it. There's no puzzle. There's no like crazy gimmick. It, you jump on a Goomba's head. Like how is this a party game? Now I know there were other Mario Party games with boss battles. But it was kind of just only one at the very end with Bowser. So once again I can't include that since there's only one boss battle. But the last one we have is Mario Party Island Tour 
Chain Chomp's Lava Lunge. This was just bad. You have this giant bar of health, and honestly, it would be a miracle if you got hit. You would have to try to get hit by this thing. You just slowly walk out of the way when it charges you and let it jump on the different gates, and then you win. I, I don't understand how this was even thought of to be a Mario Party mini game boss, uh, but you know, either way, it's not a good boss, it's not a good mini game, it's not, not fun. Now we move over to the Mario vs. Donkey Kong games and start off with Donkey Kong 94 at the construction site. This mimics the original Donkey Kong game where you have to break apart pieces of the floor in order to drop the whole thing down. Now this game actually has some pretty unique boss battles and this isn't terrible by any means, it's just the first boss battle but the only reason why I put it as the worst is because it mimics something that we've already done in the past. Now we move on to Mario vs. Donkey Kong on the Game Boy Advance and we have the Fire Mountain version of Donkey Kong because this is the only version version I think of the Donkey Kong boss battles in the game where there's nothing special going on at least the first version of this world because there's just nothing happening Donkey Kong's chucking some fire rocks and then the occasional barrel and then you just climb up and throw it at him there's no special stage gimmicks there's no unique you know terrain changes or anything you're just jumping up some platforms and throwing a barrel it's pretty basic in Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2, March of the Minis, we have Magnet Mania, which is World 4 of this game, and this is just a very boring boss fight. All these boss fights in this game are exactly the same. You're shooting mini Marios at Donkey Kong or different things to hit Donkey Kong, but this time you have to shoot them at one of the two spots at the top left or the top right of the screen in order to drop donut blocks on Donkey Kong. Yeah, you heard me right donut blocks. It's just weird that this is the only two sections of the entire stage that you can use to attack Donkey Kong, and it's just weird to drop donut blocks on them. It's not fun, it's weird, and just the whole stage design is also just not great. Mario vs. Donkey Kong Minis March Again just literally has three boss battles, and they're taken exactly from Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2 March of the Minis, and that's why I don't even know what to put on this list, so I guess the first one, because it stays extremely bland, it's just the same exact boss battle to start the game on the previous game where Donkey Kong puts his head through these different windows and you have to blast him. It's nothing special, it's nothing unique, and they just kind of completely copied the last game. And then in Mario vs. Donkey Kong Mini Land Mayhem, you have to make paths all the way up to the ladders in order to reach Donkey Kong with the Mini Marios. Now, lots of these different bosses have different stage assets which makes it very unique, like conveyor belts or springs or different types of platforming sections, uh, but this one is at the end of the game and that's the Super Skywheel version of Donkey Kong where it's just very basic. I don't understand exactly what they were going with here, and you just kind of make your way up to like one specific ladder, and you're good to go. There's no unique parts, there's no unique sections. I really don't know how this was towards the end of the game. For the final seven games, these will be Mario spinoffs. So starting off with Yoshi's Island, we have Prince Froggy, which is just an absolutely weird boss battle altogether. You have to eat these giant Shy Guys, or I guess natural sized Shy Guys since you're smaller now, and throw them at the uvula inside of the frog's stomach as just acid is dripping down from the top. It's disgusting, it's weird, it's a strange place to fight because you're all cramped in this little circle and it's just not even that hard. You're just chucking eggs at the uvula the entire time. This was a weird idea for a boss battle for sure. For Yoshi's Island DS we have Gilbert the Gooey which was just extremely weird. It was a giant booger with like gumballs all over its body but all you had to do was eat the gumballs off or blast them off with eggs and then he died. You didn't even really hit him. It would have been really cool if you had to take them all off and then hit him and then do that like three times but yeah you take all the balls off and the, he's gone it's weird for yoshi's new island it has to no doubt be bowser for me because it just doesn't make sense and it's probably just the lamest feeling boss battle ever for yoshi so you take these giant metal eggs and throw them at bowser and he just catches it kind of gets pushed back a little bit and then throws it away but somehow it's hurting him i didn't even know if i was hurting him when i was doing this the first time and like how is this doing anything and then eventually at the end he just holds the last one and falls and it just i don't know it d doesn't make sense and part two of this battle really is no big deal at all either because you got to throw the egg back at a bowser but he's so huge and the hitbox is so gigantic you don't really have to aim at all if you're anywhere near his head you could just chuck it in the background and it will hit him like every single time i don't get it look i think super princess p is a criminally underrated 2D platformer, but man, the King Boo boss fight is so terrible. All you do is go around the room and light the torches in order to make him disappear, and it actually counts as you hitting him. You don't even have to go hit him after that. You just light the torches and then he takes damage. That's it, and there's only four torches in the room, and lots of the time, almost half of them are already lit. So you only have to go to one or two. It's just stupid. 
for Luigi's Mansion, now I wanted to count all the different portrait ghosts as technical boss battles because they felt like little boss battles to me. Um, so I wanted to count Madame Clairvoya because she just kind of lets you capture her, but that's just too easy to go with. So I wanted to go with the Dancing Whirlindas because the actual capture box in order to get these guys is so weird and random to this day. I still don't quite understand when I'm supposed to shine the light and when I'm supposed to suck them up. I don't even think you have to shine the light on them. It's just a weird boss battle altogether and it just doesn't make sense to me. For Luigi's Mansion 2, it has to be the harsh possessor ghost because what does it choose to possess? A staircase. No, no joke, a staircase that leads to the gym that Luigi needs. It, it, it's crazy. It's literally just some stairs. And it just jumps up and down and tries to hit you extremely slow. So you'll just slowly walk around the stage waiting for it to fall down and for you to pull the cord in the back. It just... Yeah, it was a weird choice for them to choose everything in this whole entire world to possess. They chose the staircase to the final gym. I don't understand. And finally, for boss number 52, the final boss of the video, we have Luigi's Mansion 3's Klim. Klim was terrible. So you're floating around the water on this kind of rubber ducky floaty and you have to pick him up and shoot him at one of the spikes and then go all the way back to the ladder, climb up, try to capture him and then he goes back into the water and if you get popped you get all the way outside of the water have to go all the way back into the water with your floaty in order to try to attack him again it's just a long and tedious process especially the first time after a while you'll get the hang of it but that first time it's just so long and so tedious and that was 52 different bosses going through every single mario game spin-off mainline everything and talking about the worst boss of every game now I bet somehow I still forgot and glossed over some Mario games. So let me know in the comments down below if I missed any Mario game that does have boss battles as well. And I'll be sure to include it on another list if I make another one of these based on like the best bosses or something like that. But let me know how much you guys like this video by leaving a like, subscribing, leaving a comment down below, and turning on post notifications so you're updated whenever I post. Thank you so much for tuning in guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. See you guys.